How's it going? I'm Isla Golden and welcome to my vlog. All right, okay, so last time I said this one would be talking about new projects or new project, because um, there's only one new project that I'm personally working on at the moment. Um, but since then I've, I've had a little think and I think that, you know, I'm not just going to talk about my own <laughs> new project, because I, I could, <laughs> I really could, because it's really exciting for me at the moment. Um, but I think I also want to sort of spend some time shouting out um, some of the, the wonderful things that my dear, dear friend Jade has done recently. So, um, <clears throat> I haven't really had a, a, a chance to let you guys know. I think I mentioned briefly that she had a book of essays coming out. Um, they, they are out now. They, the ebook format is available. Um, it's, you can get it through Amazon and, and through Lulu, uh, just like you can with um, my work. Um, and she's sorting getting the audiobook version of that out at the moment. Um, that is called Exit Pursued by a Bill. If you guys are interested, go, go check it out. As I said, it's a short book of essays. Um, they're quite interesting, so give it give it a go um and then the other thing that she's done recently is released a novel uh also ebook format which she again is hoping to get an audiobook version of soon but for this one she actually needs to to build up some funds I mean, with her essays she's actually done the audio herself um so that's you know i think pretty interesting in and of itself go, definitely definitely support her Go check it out <laughs> just just so that you know she can get the the audio side of it you know, moving a little bit faster but you know to cut down on costs so that she has you know done done the audio for herself but for the the other book that she's got out at the moment which is called father brotherhood if you guys are interested again it's kindle and and lulu so you know go go check it out um she yeah she she's got uh, a definite voice actor in mind um for actually reading it so what she's trying to do at the moment is raise the funds for for getting that sorted um and you know i i think it's it's a nice it's a nice it's a nice book <laughs> that's a weird way of putting it <laughs> um <clears throat> it's an interesting book it's very much a slice of life drama um which basically takes place over, I don't know, I think it's about a year or so in the lives of, of these characters and it's it's started by a particular event and then it, it goes through to what is essentially quite a nice little happy ending. Um, and it, it's sweet, it'll make you smile, it'll make you laugh. Um, it, you know, the, the characters that get focused on aren't necessarily your typical slice of life characters, they're not necessarily completely removed from your like, slice of life characters, but you're not necessarily a typical slice of life character. The story is not necessarily going to be completely predictable for anybody who, who reads slice of life either. Um, so I, I, I don't think it is. I mean, I'm not a big reader of slice of life, but I do watch quite a few like slice of life um, animes. So I, you do get a feel of like the certain beats that kind of go with the whole slice of life um, kind of storytelling. And I think she does quite a nice job of not necessarily going with that exact flow whilst not completely breaking the conventions either. <laughs> so she, she's got a nice balance with it. And, you know, I've, I've read it, I've reviewed it for her as well. So, you know, I, I definitely, I definitely recommend it. And, you know, yes, OK, there are a few little typos here and there, but any of you who remember the, the blog that I did with, with Jade sometime last year, um, we'll remember, you know, she's there, there are certain reasons why she finds it difficult to necessarily spot these typos. So, you know, especially when she doesn't have an independent editor and she, she can't afford an independent editor to go through and make sure that she hasn't got any typos left. Um, she, I think she does an absolutely amazing job of minimising it as much as, as much as she does. <laughs> and, and I hope she's not going to be offended by anything that I've just said. <laughs> I, 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 you know, I, I'm saying it in, in the absolute most respect for her. You know, she does not find it particularly easy to, um, to edit through things 
and and spot every tiny little thing. I mean, I don't find it particularly easy to edit through things and spot every tiny little mistake. <laughs> it's, it's not an easy thing to do, and my vision is semi-normal. <laughs> I couldn't imagine how hard it would be when things don't necessarily stay in place. Um, like it, it can a little bit with 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 her. Um, so yeah, no, I I definitely say check out her book of essays, check out her novel. It's you know any anything you know if you if you're interested in in what you see with them, then you know by all means you know, buy it. Every little little bit of royalty will go towards you know creating the the audio book for Father Brotherhood, which you know I think would be amazing because. Honestly, when I when I read it, um, I actually did it through um, the voice reading app on my Kindle because my Kindle is annoying and will occasionally skip like five pages. So whenever I'm actually reading a book with my Kindle, I just voice read. Just just have the voice reader on. <laughs> and honestly, yeah, it's it's an audio book. It's it's you know she she has written it initially to be an audio book, and that is that's kind of the whole idea behind it. Um, she, she's always had the idea of it being an audiobook in mind. Um, but yeah, it would be amazing for it to actually have like an official audiobook version because it is, it's, it's what it's been designed for. And, you know, as I said, listening to it with my voice reader, yeah, it's what it's been designed for. <laughs> so any, any help or support or whatever you guys can, can give, you know, it, to, to make things happen a bit more, you know, to get her to where she wants to go, that would just be like, amazing because I think I think her work is worth it um, and I know maybe I'm a little bit biased because you know, she's my best friend and all <laughs> but I'm going to stand by my opinion so yeah <laughs> all right so enough talking about the exciting new things going on in the lovely gates world and time to focus on the stuff going on in mine. So <clears throat> those of you who remember um, a few vlogs ago when I mentioned that you know I, I had an idea for another project in mind because of all the editing work that I'd been doing on Hyena Boy um, but that I was going to sort of wait until I'd finished my current project until I started writing it because I it's been a long time since I've done multiple projects uh, at the same time. Yeah, that lasted all until I finished editing Hyena Boy. <laughs> because um, this is kind of the situation that, that sort of, I sort of found myself in for the, the couple of months sort of leading up to the release of Hyena Boy. Was that I was doing my little bit of writing in the morning and then of an evening, um, of an evening after work or, you know, on and off throughout the day when I wasn't working. I was editing Hyena Boy and that editing also included, you know, adding lots of stuff and I think in total I added like three new chapters from what it was originally um, and it, it meant that I'd actually found a way of creating extra time for myself just for writing which I hadn't actually done um, since my health started getting a bit bad <laughs> a few years ago um so yeah once I'd sort of finished editing Hyena Boy I was like literally like even a couple of days before I was like thinking to myself you know what I'm so used now to having this you know spending this time just just working on on my writing and yes editing isn't exactly the same as working on writing but still I've technically been working on two two separate projects at the same time for you know the last six to eight weeks or so. It makes no sense not to start work on this project now whilst you know I'm so excited about it and yeah, um didn't expect to be getting through it so fast. Um so the writing that I'm I'm used to doing in the morning, it you know, I might write like a few paragraphs at the most. Um Sometimes I'll go a little bit further if I've got time in, in the morning or if I've got like you know, definite ideas as to where I'm going. Part of the reason it's, it's taking me so long to get through it and it's, it's so slow, <laughs> it feels so slow, is because I like really limit down how much time I'm, I'm spending thinking about it. Um, and I was just kind of like, this, this project, it's just probably going to be 
keep going and going and going. And I really, really, really want to start this, this other project now. So I have. <laughs> and, um, yeah, since, since the point in time that Hyena Boy has been released, it's, it's, yeah, it's going quite strong. Um, I'm starting to get the feeling like this will be my next book to release. <laughs> I would like this to be my next book to release. Um, that's part of the reason why I'm telling you guys about it now, because at the, at the rate I'm going, it's going to be released next year. <laughs> Maybe even at the beginning of next year. I don't know. I, I'm not sure. I'm, you know, obviously, I want to be able to spend time editing and, and you know, as much time working on it properly as I can before saying that it's ready for release and I haven't finished, you know, I haven't gotten to the end of writing it yet. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, in, in, in terms of, yeah, I definitely, I definitely see it being out before the end of next year. And, you know, with that in mind, I was like, well, it's never too early to start building type, right? <laughs> um, so yeah, as, I'm, as I've sort of mentioned and alluded to, um, this project has come about because of all the editing work that I've, I've done on, on Hyena Boy. And as I was sort of working through Hyena Boy, I kind of realised, yes, Jay's story is a, a good story and it's a, a focus story. And I, I love his story still, and you know, I'm definitely glad that I've written that as the, the sort of the primary story. But somebody else. Somebody else has a story. <laughs> some, some, some other character has a very interesting story also going on in the background. <laughs> and I think it was sort of, as I was sort of coming towards the, towards the end of editing and one of the, like, the final little decision details that I, I kind of add in for why this particular character acts the way he sort of does, um, that I kind of was like, okay, you, you don't clarify anything about why he is the particular way he is in, in, in this book, but there is, there is a story, there's a story going along in the background of this story <laughs> that is really interesting and I want to tell that story, and that's what I'm doing. I'm not going to say which which one of my boys it is, because, <laughs> you know, it, at, at this point in time, you guys don't need to know that, and, you know, speculation might be a good thing for anybody who's read the book, they might be able to go, okay, I'm going to guess it might be this character, I'm going to guess it might be that character. Um, also, it might, you know, help convince people to read how you know <laughs> um, I mean, it's, it's, in some ways, there's so much going on in this story that I, I didn't know was going on in the background um, of, of, of Hyena Boy that just makes makes me feel like, it, yeah, this, this is worth telling this story. There, there are a lot of details here that, you know, because of the way Jay tells his story, he does skip over a lot of stuff. But he kind of skips over a lot of stuff, mostly because of how he's telling his story. Um, because he is basically writing it down and he has a limited number of notebooks, he has a limited amount of time, you know, he, he does skip over huge chunks and he is acknowledging the fact that he, he is writing the whole, the whole sort of framing work of his story is the fact that he is writing it, whereas the protagonist of the other story, and I'm not even going to say what it's called just yet because I get the feeling that it might be, it might give away which, which one of them it is <laughs> for, for anybody paying any attention <laughs> to I mean, boy when they read it. <laughs> um, <clears throat> it. It's being told as a first person narrative. It's not being told as something that's being written down. It's being told as a first person narrative. Um, and because of that, you know, there is a different feel to it. It's a lot slower paced. You can focus in on a lot more of the events that, you know, Jay would have just skipped over because he felt like he, he had a limited, you know, amount of being able to tell his story, whereas, you know, this other character doesn't feel limited by that in the same way because he's not writing it down. This isn't, you know, a, a notebook or, or a journal or a diary. It is just a first person narrative. And... Uh, because of that, you know, a lot of the events that Jay either sort of alludes to kind of gets included. Um, 
you get a lot of details from like between the ears and um, it's quite good because you kind of you kind of have an idea of certain things that must have happened based on what's gone on in, in, in Hyena Boy and then you know obviously scenes that this particular character appears in in Hyena Boy get recontextualized um within this this new narrative as well and actually sometimes it's quite fascinating because when I was writing it I was thinking oh maybe this is going through his head and maybe that's going through his head and actually when I got to that scene I was kind of like no it's similar to what I thought it was but actually it's, it's this this is what's really going on in his head and this is why he does this and this is why he does that and it's yeah a lot of things I sort of happened were sort of like when I was kind of trying to contextualize it with her in a way um because I was sort of having this other narrative going on in the back of my head as I was doing like some of my final edits um, some of the events that I, I thought, oh, they must have happened in this, you know, at this particular point and this particular point. I'm actually going, no, it, it happened slightly earlier. And actually, when you think about it, it makes sense that it happened slightly earlier. <laughs> so yeah, it's it's been quite it's been quite fun. And yes, I know um, roughly where this this story is is going to end, and, and the fact that it is a con concurrent plot to to what's going on in in Hyena Boy, it's it's fascinating just how much more story that you get from this other character and it's not you know yes you've got these scenes coming in from from hyena boy every now and then um but they're not reliant on that there there is a narrative being told there is you know there is a destination at, at the end of this which things are, are moving towards and things are going to reach and yes okay it's yeah yeah but <laughs> so, sorry that's me kind of not quite wanting to give away where either book kind of ends because you know people who haven't read how you avoid I don't want to spoil the ending for um hopefully you know but once you have read how you avoid you'll kind of guess roughly where the ending is going to be in this new one it's obviously it's going to go a little bit beyond that particular point um in order to sort of wrap the story up a little bit more um but you know it, it, it's still heading towards that particular point um so yeah it, it's about trying to make that journey distinct and interesting and different from the the parallel story and i think i'm doing a pretty good job of that um and you know i'm glad i wrote them in the order that i wrote them in. um I'm glad I focused on on Jay's story first, um, but oh my god, <laughs> I am just adoring the other story at the moment so much. And you know, once I finish doing this recording, I, I'm so going back and, and writing the next scene that I want to write. Um, and you know, it's it's a fascinating project to work on for me, partly because I'm I'm so excited and I'm so passionate about everything that's going on in it um but partly because every now and then i have to like literally write like sit down and write a timeline between like hyena boy scenes um and just not it's not even like a strict timeline it's just these are certain events that i know i want to happen between where i am now and the next time we get you know interrupted by stuff going on in hyena boy um I have like put like years next to it and everything. <laughs> so, like I'm in such and such a year and it is such and such a month. Um so yeah, and, and again, just like I was doing with with Hyena Boy and doing a through the editing of Hyena Boy, I'm constantly Googling stuff <laughs> from the past. <laughs> Google did such and such exist in <laughs> Google, what day of the week was it? <laughs> it's such and such a year. <laughs> but you know, I'm actually really enjoying you know that side of it as well. And yeah, yeah. Now it's it's definitely it's definitely one of those things where both books will complement each other. And in fact, some of the scenes that I have written. I've written almost knowing the concurrent moment in in Hyena Boy because obviously yes there are crossover you know scenes between the two books um, which are 
not necessarily portrayed exactly the same because it's two different perspectives. Um, so one of them might say the character has said it in a particular way or in a particular tone and the other one has interpreted it slightly differently um, and, and things like that. So, you know, it's it's not, the scenes are not like mirror Im images of each other, but alongside the scenes where the, you know, both of these, both Jay and said, uh, said and the boy from Never Aethan. <laughs> Um, alongside the scenes where they're sort of together, you've also got moments where I know what Jay is doing on this particular day at this particular point in time, and this is what this character is doing, and or you know, th this is how this particular character dealt with such and such a situation, and this is kind of like the reflective version of of that event, uh, not necessarily happening at the same time, but happening in like similar time frame to each other. So. Yeah, it's 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 quite interesting and it's quite fun and I think, as I said, I think the two books will complement each other really well and you could either look at it as Hyena Boy kind of being almost the spin-off of, I mean, I know it's like, it's, it's weird to think of Hyena Boy being the spin-off of the other book, but I think that's kind of the way it makes more sense um, in some ways. Um, but you know they're, they're essentially they're essentially two concurrent storylines where the characters are interconnected and having that sort of other perspective um, on what's going on and that other look at what's going on in I, as I said I think the two books are, I'm designing the two books to complement each other so that you can get a good story just by reading one or the other and you can get a great story from reading both. And um, that's that's very much, you know, how I kind of feel about it right now, whether other people will agree with me once the once the other book is released, I don't know. Um and the other book really should be being thought of as a spin-off of Hyena Boy, but I think because you get the, the additional details, because you get so much more of, of, of what goes on, maybe not in in Jay's life, although you know he does definitely appear in a lot of these additional scenes and in these additional moments. Um but yeah, I think because Jay's book is written as this this series of, of notebook entries, um, not even a series of notebook entries, this you know continual notebook entry that goes across many notebooks and is written across a short period of time, um, as is referenced within the book itself. Um, I think that kind of makes more sense as being thought of as the 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 almost narrative. It's almost like the, the book within the book that you don't know is actually happening in the book. <laughs> the story within the story that you don't know is actually happening. Um, I don't know, it, it's it's hard. It's hard for me to sort of necessarily exactly explain the right way of, of thinking about it because I don't think there is a correct way of thinking about it. Um, it it's like I've written the spin off before I've written the book and I, I don't think that's necessarily the you know, fair because I love Hyena Boy as a story, so I, I, it's not it's it's not a, a spin-off, but it is kind of <laughs> because it's the smaller narrative because it's the the shorter story and it is definitely the shorter story at this point. <laughs> Trust me, <laughs> oh, oh boy, is it the shorter story at this point? <laughs> um, <clears throat> but you know, in in terms of how it is as, as a book and how, it, how it, it feels as a book, you know, Jay's story is what it needs to be and it's told in a way that it needs to be told and this, this other story is what it needs to be and is being told in a way that it, it needs to be told. The fact that it's it feels like a, you know, uh, it feels like the main narrative even though it's, it's not, it's not there to consider it the main narrative because Jay's narrative is also a main narrative. Um, so I think what I was sort of saying before, I think they are concurrent books designed to complement each other. They are, you know, um, concurrent storylines that are designed to complement each other. And yeah, I think I think that's just how you kind of have to look at it. And I hope that makes sense. Um, I hope. Anything more I've said has made sense. Anyway, so 
This one has run a little bit longer than I was intending, um, because you now obviously I want to talk so hype about stuff. <laughs> um, so next time I think I want to do a fan fluation, because I haven't done one for a little while, and I haven't actually thought about what I'm going to do next time, so it's not been put on the calendar yet, so I can't check. <laughs> So fan it is. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, I, I hope you found this one interesting. I hope you're looking forward to my spontaneous fan creation next week. And I will see you guys next time. See ya. <laughs> if you've enjoyed this video, feel free to check out some of my others. And if you like what you see, please like and subscribe. See ya.